The realagriculture.com Beef School is presented by DuPont Pioneer. To find more Beef School episodes, go to beefschool.ca. So let's start at the beginning. Let's talk about hybrid selection and let's just take it all the way through to the end of the process. Okay, Jay, when we're thinking about a, a hybrid for high moisture corn, what we're looking for is a hybrid that'll produce high grain yields, but we want to ensure that it reaches physiological maturity or what we call black layer by the first killing frost. If it doesn't reach that point, then there's potentially yield losses. So the goal is, is to ensure a hybrid that'll reach that point safely every year. Other than that, same considerations you would have for any other hybrid selection depending on your area. That's right. If you need uh, corn borer protection, you know, herbicide tolerance, those sorts of things, no different than growing any corn for any other purpose. Well, the, the challenge in the prairies is we don't have Iowa weather and we don't have the heat units. So you're growing a crop that excels with lots of heat lots of sunshine and a long growing season and we're trying to fit it into uh, uh, Western Canada where we don't have quite the heat units that they do in Ontario or Iowa. Or, uh, so our challenges are seeding it at the right time and hitting the right heat units so that we're not trying to go past what what the weather will actually allow us to grow. That's been some of our mistakes in the past, trying to do a 2,650 heat unit when we really only can bank on 2,400 heat units. And then you don't get the maturity, so your kernels aren't big enough and it just doesn't make as nice a feed. So we, we, we've learned that if we're gonna grow the crop, fit the corn genetics to the heat units and daylight hours, sunlight hours we have. So when it comes to harvest, if we look at high moisture grain corn, that's where we harvest the corn with a combine and a corn header. You know, we want to target the corn moisture to be 26 to 32 percent moisture. Um, any higher than that, you know, the corn might not have reached physiological maturity. Any lower than that, and fermentation might not be as complete and we'll lose some of the feed efficiencies of those kernels. If we're talking earlidge or snaplage, that's when we put the corn header on a forage harvester. Then we want to look at that grain moisture from that 32 to 40 percent moisture, you know, to, to ensure that it's going in the pit properly. Combining corn is a lot of fun actually. It's, uh, it's the funnest combining you'll do because it just pours in that hopper like the hopper's full before you before you ever would expect it to be full. It just happens so fast, just because you're pulling 150 or 160 bushels an acre instead of 110 or 20. So um, the, the, probably the, the downside of that is we've sometimes had snowstorms come through in mid-September or end of September, early October. They melt off again, but it can knock some of your stalks down and now you're missing some of those cobs. Some of, if, if they've hit the ground, you aren't gonna be able to, to pick them up. Um, so that, that'd be one of the challenges. The other challenge with combining versus silaging is you have all the corn stover left afterwards. And that, th that has to be dealt with somehow because that's just a little too much to try and work in. We've grazed it, that's worked well, but if you don't have cows, that doesn't work for everybody. Uh, we, we've also mowed it raked it and baled it and it works as bedding and cow feed uh, fairly well but it is one more operation you have to get done before fall freeze up. We want to make sure that when we're grinding it into the pit if we're using the combine that we're breaking those kernels up into five or six pieces is the ideal goal. But we just want to ensure no more than five percent whole kernels because if we have too many whole kernels it's hard to exclude the oxygen from around those kernels in the pit and that'll increase spoilage. We don't want to grind it too fine because then that increases the risk of potential acidosis in the animals because that really increased surface area on that fine flour um, dissolves and is digested very quickly in the animal. Okay, so there's a lot to consider if you're the one handling the processor. So the first thing, you know, I want to 
you know, growers to focus on is when we put it in the pit that we get it packed, put an effective high moisture corn inoculant on it because, you know, that feed ferments rapidly, but it also can spoil, you know, very quickly. So to ensure that you put it in the pit, you know, in top quality is very important. Cover it, keep all the oxygen out of it, pack it. It's very critical. So, so it, if you know how to put up good silage, you pretty much know how to put up good high moisture corn. The key is to get it 23 to ideally is 12, 26% moisture, 28 is great, 30 is okay. So getting below 23, it doesn't ensile as well. So our perfect is a 28% moisture. We run it through our, our corn roller. So it's an aggressive corn roller that tears it apart. We inoculate it. Uh, going up the going out of the roller it gets inoculated and then we doze it up with a big tractor just like putting up silage doze it up pack it really tight and and then we cover it with uh, plastic and then we ignore it for a month month and a half to let it in sile and we'll dig back into it in around Christmas time we get started on it usually Regular corn, when we feed it from a dry standpoint, to have uh, the same use efficiency as high moisture corn, it'll need to be steam flaked or steam rolled. And not a lot of producers are set up with the ability to do that here in Western Canada. So a reason a, a feedlot producer might consider using high moisture corn is that it a, has a very high efficiency rating on it. So the starch in the kernel is almost entirely available to the animal. For, you know, and that comes out as energy. So compared to feeding a dry, dry grain corn, you're looking at about a possible 10 to 15% efficiency improvement. The first year we tried it, we did dry combining and it worked really well. Went through our roller really well, but we didn't get the energy kick out of it we hoped to. Once we did some more research, realized high moisture corn, in siling it and letting it ferment, actually brings the starches out and now you get the full energy effect of corn, almost comparable to putting it through a steam chest and steam flaking it. We actually get good performance. It's very similar to our barley and wheat diets uh, as far as performance, um, it, even though it's a higher moisture product. So it's, it's, it, it does well. It performs as well as any grains we can grow here.